I was born in Arkansas. We worked in the orchards. We moved uh, during my childhood, um, usually several times a year. We traveled a little Ford coupe, and it was had a front seat, and then it had a shelf in the back, and that's where I would lay when we traveled, and I daydreamed of doing all kinds of incredible stuff. People from Arkansas were looked upon with not very pleasant. They liked us to pick the apples, but uh, go away and come back next season. My mom was loving. Uh, my dad was tough. Came from a family in which the sons used to fight each other because in Arkansas there's not a lot to do. And if somebody challenged my dad, uh, they usually lived to regret it immediately. Then we started coming to Wenatchee and uh, we would stay in shacks. We were not rich. Now, um, I have no complaints. I mean, they were hardworking, good parents. I was driving down the street one night and there was this car stopped and this young lady was outside. And so I met Ruth, and we started dating. And then February the 6th of the following year, 1955, we were married. Ruth was a believer, and I wasn't and uh, hardly was aware of what that was. Don Phillips, who uh, was a friend of ours, he and I were driving around on a Sunday afternoon, and we got talking and went to the pastor's house and knocked on the door. He looked at us, said, I'll be right back. And we went down to the church and knelt and gave our life to Christ. Everything changed. Since that day, my dad's been, his compass is pointed north. And I, I'd say, you know, from the stories I heard, that he didn't start at the equator. I think he started pretty far south, okay? <laughs> I don't think, you know, I think he was quite a bit more toward the South Pole when he started out than the North Pole. And, uh, but, you know, he's always, er, ever since that day, he, he's been pointing north. Ruth and I started going to church, working long hours. Ruth worked at Sears, and uh, I spent, uh, 11 years in supermarket business, and we wanted our own business. And so we ended up buying a used ambulance from Jones and Jones. I was highly qualified, actually. I fainted at the sight of blood. Our schedule was pretty simple. We were on call seven days a week, 24 hours a day, and we had three days off the first year. In the middle of all this, God was blessing us. And ways that you can't you can't explain. I mean, you don't you don't put somebody that faints in the sight of blood out of being the person who's rescuing heart attack victims, but that's what it was. still is a hard worker to this day. And, uh, you know, he was the kind of guy that uh, you thought, oh, I'll, I'll try and work as hard as him, and he, he'd just bury it, to tell you the truth. So our kids grew up, and what, what um, I would point out is organized chaos. The house was full of people. We were going to church, uh, talked to the kids about knowing Christ, and they all worked in the business, and so, the business started here, and they were just part of it. It was chaotic. It had to be hard to be one of our family. My dad and I had a good relationship. There was times he was, you know, I, I thought he was hard, and they were strict. My parents were strict, and and they they were 
you know, at times I thought, well, he's a little bit over the top hard, but now that I'm looking back, now that I have sons, I, I, I totally understand. And honestly, looking back, once I've heard his story in that environment of, you know, you, you, you either work or we're not eating tonight, and then, you know, to, to move on to that, to having sons of his own, it, it was really incredible just how we ended up being treated in, in the kind of environment we were raised in. Once the ambulance business started and then eventually they started a medical supply, we were, we were expected to work. We were, it was part of the household. Um, super busy, but he always made sure that, you know, that we understood that you worked hard and, and with that came blessings. And we did fun things. We went camping. Um, you know, we spent some time at the lake, you know, all, all those things, you know, but my dad was my father first. He took that responsibility, you know, real seriously. And, um, and he was my father first and my friend second. And I'll tell you, I see, you know, a lot of dads out there that decide they want to be the buddy, you know, they want to be the friend. They don't want to be the father. I think that the dad's walking their son hand in hand straight to hell, to tell you the truth, you know. And, but dad took that responsibility very seriously of being my father. Uh, but there was a time in my life when I went off the rails and, uh, and I chased the world for a while. The normal, I partied, I chased girls, you know, did this and that. I, I will tell you that you know, when I was off chasing the world, I was around the wrong people. There wasn't a time when I didn't know what was right and what was wrong. I, I always knew. I always knew I needed Jesus. There was always, you know, some guilt when I was doing it, you know, which was good. And and I think, you know, thinking back, I, I look back at my childhood and, and I, I just thank God that my, my parents planted seeds. Again, I always believed in Jesus. Knew, knew there was a God, knew, knew where I wanted to be, but there was a point where I just said, you know what, see this to the end. And I just made a, 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 just a decision at one point in my life to just say, you know what, I, I've set my course. I, I'm heading that direction and I'm, I'm gonna finish this race. I'm gonna finish this journey and I'm gonna finish it out heading toward Jesus. I got a call, we were in bed, and they said, uh, you better come over here, we have smoke showing and the windows are hot. And by the time I got there, the flames were bursting out and we lost everything. It was an arson fire. We had an employee who had a knee surgery and got hooked on Demerol, went in and uh, broke open the safe and stole some drugs and then started a small fire thinking that he was going to call the fire department and, you know, have it extinguished, you know, before it was ever a problem, but it would destroy the evidence. Well, it ended up, we had a supply store and there was, you know, literally hundreds of oxygen tanks stored there. And this fire got to the point where it, the oxygen tanks vented off and, um, and the whole building went up like a giant blowtorch. It was, it was hard on my parents, I'll tell you. But it was one of those times when, you know, they, they kept, their, they kept their, their, their direction north and my parents forgave them. And that was just the kind of people, person my dad is, my mom is, you know, and, and uh, he came and asked for forgiveness and they forgave him and, and east to west. So then, uh, you know, started working in the business, running calls. That's the thing I enjoy most working, you know, as far as my work life is I really enjoyed helping people. I just, that was just something that just still to this day brings me joy. And then all of a sudden one day uh, he came in and said, well, uh, we'd like to sell the business to you boys, you know, have you boys take it over. So it's, yeah, it's been a while since 1986 till to, to today we've been running the ambulance business. The government would come in and tell me, do this. And they were telling me to do things that were stupid. And I won't even describe what they were because it didn't make any sense. And I finally got to the point, enough of this. And so Ruth and I rolled up our sleeves and we ran for the legislature. 
and we were successful. Now, just a point of reference, this is a, a kid from Arkansas who daydreamed on the shelf of a little coop. And so there is there is no question that God was leading us. No question. You know, I'll say this about, uh, I'll say this about my dad is, there was only there was only one thing in my life that my dad said was that he ever said to me that he said was important, and um, he said it to me when I was in trouble. He said it to me, you know, in good times, and um, <clears throat> and he it wasn't about money. It was only one thing he said that was important, and uh, I'll try not to get choked up here, but he said, and he would say it this way every time: Sean, the most important thing in your life is your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And he'd say it to me <coughs> when I was in trouble. But there was times I'd be walking through and he'd read his Bible and he'd just look up and he'd say that to me. And he'd just look up and I, I can still see him sitting in his chair with his journal out. And he'd say, Sean, the most important thing in your life is your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And he he's lived that out. I mean, he definitely, not only did he say that to me, but I saw it. My grandpa was not a Christian, but when he, when he got sick, he got cancer, and my dad's influence on him ended up saving him. The guy was hard. I mean, he was, you just grew up in a hard life in, in an amazing transformation of a man to a soft, gentle soul. He had gone into a coma, took him to the hospital in the ambulance. Um, I was reading him the 23rd Psalms, and he was not aware. And suddenly my dad woke up, looked at me, tremendously weak, and put his feet over the side of the bed and tried to stand up. And I had my arms under, my hands under his armpits holding him up. And so he stood there for a minute, was shaking because he had no strength. And uh, he looked at me and he said, call my name. And he said, I'm going home. And so he passed away. Incredible. Just like my dad, um, you know, I wanted my boys to know the Lord. You know, we really saw how how my how my dad went about business and how he went about life and, and what his priorities were. As any good farmer knows, if you don't plant a seed, you, there there's not a harvest, right? And and I think that's you know that's one thing that I think is so important for men. They see how you act. They see in church, they see you in the word. They see you the way that you treat other people. They, they see you, you know, how you handle your finances. All those things are seeds that get planted in, in the seed of a young boy or a young girl. And God has put you in that place and you need to take that seriously. You can't just think about this generation and you at that moment. You have to think about how that's gonna affect not only you, but but your kids, their kids, their grandkids, and you know, you, you have to think generationally about how this goes and, and do the hard work of being a dad. We weren't perfect at it, just like my parents weren't perfect at it, you know, and it's, you know, it's part of its learning all the way. And uh, by the grace of God, you know, both our boys are loving and following Jesus. There is an eternity, there is a God, and there is nothing, nothing absolutely nothing that even starts to compare in knowing Jesus Christ. Decide where you're going, make that decision. You know, make the decision that you're going there and your family's going with you. And, and you're, gonna, you're gonna take them along on this journey and it's a good journey. And I encourage you to go and 